The most important thing I look for when hiring. What would you say was the main reason why you decided to found this venture? I've gone through. How did you manage to build up all your connections? Bro, I probably cleared like $50,000 flipping bots and then. Going to school for business? Uh, well, I'm in high school right now. I'm going to be a senior next year. And um, this summer camp was just kind of for like a pre-college thing. Oh, okay. That's sick. Yeah. I mean, I've been out here for a month. I actually love the experience. Uh, it's like they try to make it as similar to college as possible. And it, like, honestly, I'm really excited. Are you staying at like a dorm? Yeah. Like I, I share a room with my roommate. It's a little, it's a little dirty right now, but... <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sick, bro. But yeah, yeah. If you have, um, I'm, I've known MPAP, um, since like 2017. Like I've, really? I've been working with Swift iOS since the, like the beginning, bro. So I've seen it all in this, this like discord space. So shoot whatever you got. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I just have, a, um, a few questions that, uh, the professor wanted us to ask. And then also I added in some questions that are just like kind of, uh, clarifying, uh, so I can write in what flip flip actually is and, um, your experiences. Yeah, for sure. What you okay. got? Cool. So first question is what is flip flip and how long have you been in this business for? So flip flip is basically a all in one place for reselling. Um, it started basically what we did is I was just like thrifting every day, like selling on eBay, stuff like that. Um, and then I decided to make like a, like a chat room and invite other resellers and charge them like $20 a month, you know, making some money doing that. Um, and then this was back in like 2017. So it kind of started just like trying to make money at thrift stores. And then I was like, let me just be collaborative. Let me make like a, like a community channel. Um, and then people started to just join like wildfire. So it was, it was a lot of timing, um, a lot of just like practicality, like trying to help people, you know, charging money also like kind of like weirdly incentivizes people because it feels like you're like a part of it, you know. Um, so from there, it just kind of like spiraled into this like huge uh, reseller community. OK. And so what would you say was the a main reason why you decided to found this venture? Um, like I said, it started first, like for myself personally, like I just wanted to connect with other resellers and share ideas, like what thrift stores were really good. Um, what stores are you finding like bolos, which means like be on the lookout. So it, it started with the idea of like getting Intel and like information. So that was really valuable. And then from there, like I said, it just grew so much and, and people were just lining up to like pay money. And, you know, that's always a good business too, right? When, when demand is like crazy and you're like one of the only people doing it, you really want to like hit the ground running. So, so finding like a sector that's kind of early and then also like sticking to like, is it helping people? Um, does it have that like limited kind of, you know what I'm saying? So just, there's a few different things, but that was kind of like the basis of it. Yeah. I feel like when you have people like waiting in line just for you to take their money, that's how, you know, you've kind of like made it. Yeah. And it, and it wasn't like, um, like a huge, like it started kind of slow. Like I checked my phone and people would be like, Hey, I want to join. Where do I send the $20? And I was like, wait a minute you can make more money, like teaching people. Like I was making more, like I was already selling on eBay, like getting those eBay notifications, which is great money, just, just solo. But then there's like this aspect of like community building and like the subscription model and like everybody working together for like a common goal. And then all of that money kind of goes towards that common goal. So it was just like a, a crazy mixture, you know? Yeah, that sounds really sick. I mean, I've been reselling myself, I think, since like fifth grade. So I've been doing this for a little bit now. And uh, yeah. I, I remember like back in 2016 and like early on, like I don't uh, I didn't really hear about much about uh, Flip Flip until recently when you guys are on like the front page of WAP. Like that. I feel like that's how I first learned about y'all. But I've known about Swift uh, since like like that bot was like what three thousand dollars four thousand dollars kind of crazy yeah so like that that's a good example too is like the botting market so when bots first came out i used to flip bots for like ten thousand dollars profit like i don't know if you know wraith 
Oh yeah, dude. I, I used to. Um, do you know Swipe by chance? Probably. I I beat bro. I probably know everybody at this point. <laughs> you know, like it's just it's just a matter of like when I communicated with them. You know. Yeah. Um, Bob- but yeah, yeah. I remember I got Wraith for. I think I put out an alert. I was like, I'm buying this bot and. You know, to be on point with your your project is like that was another meta. Like people were making bots, and during that period from like 2020, 2019, like bots were everything. Like I'm talking, and you probably know they were going for ten thousand. Like that's a lot of money. Yeah. Like you know, cyber, um, cyber and like bro, I probably cleared like fifty thousand dollars flipping bots, and then. Now the bot market is kind of like, it's still there, It's but it's a little more like washed out. Like it's more, the quality stayed, everything else kind of like, and the prices went down. So for your, your business thing, it's like, that's really how it is. It's like, there's these metas that are constantly like going around. And once like right now, for example, in my business, um, like in-store hunting and like clearance hunting right now is like a really big meta. Like people are getting... Home Depot like clearance list reports and we're posting those and I've pivoted into that to stay. So my business doesn't go out of business, you know? Um, so yeah. So what would you say makes your product unique? I think what makes flip flip unique from the beginning is like this idea that it's almost like brand. It's like, I'm the brand, like I'm the leader of it. So I need to lead with like compassion. I need to lead by doing things like this, like talking to you, like talking to people, a lot of, a lot of, uh, like other people in my industry, sometimes you go to their Instagram and it's just like pictures of like sneakers or there's no face to it. There's no story to it. Um, and the other thing too, is like being, being humble enough to know that like, I'm not that important. It's more about making my, my community, you know, either money or making them happy, feeling involved, Um, and then, like I told you before the meta jumping, so always being hot onto the next two thing makes us very unique because some people, they stick to one sector like sneakers, for example, and like sneakers is kind of in a lull period, but like in 2018 sneaker reselling was like crazy. Um, and it'll cycle back around, but that's really what makes any business unique is like being able to jump these metas, staying very proactive, staying like hiring, finding talent, and then brand, you know, I think, I think just putting yourself out there with like a podcast, because some people will just mess with you because of like who you are and what you stand for, you know, in business. That's another thing. So there's a lot of people doing the same thing, to be honest with you, but it's like, who do you like kind of mess with more, if that makes sense? Um, You know? Yeah, I mean, I've kept up with uh, Flip Flip a little bit. I think I've been in the channel uh, or in your server before um, from the free trial. And mm-hmm. I, I checked out the 5% better thing. And I feel like that's definitely one thing that makes you like a lot different than a lot of these other cook groups. Because, yeah, um, like I feel like cook groups nowadays, like I feel like a lot of the information you can find everywhere. But like you said, being like the face of like the um, the company, it kind of like makes people like you more and then choose you over competitors. Yeah. And and I'll tell you too, like a personal story, man, is like, I've gone through, you know, spouts of, they call it like corporate corporatization where you get like really corporate about your company. Like I've, like you said, I'm on the front page of WAP, like I've made lots of money and you kind of like almost like lose yourself sometimes and you have to stay true with any business to like who you are and like what you want you to represent. Cause like you said, there's a lot of cook groups. There's a lot of communities like my page, you know, maybe we were first, but now it's like, there's so many to choose from. So the the customer kind of has more of the power now. So you need to kind of just like be who you are and like represent that and let the, let the customer kind of pick, you know, that's really how it is right now. Yeah. And you talk about like, um, I guess, your life and how it incorporates into your business life as well. Uh, how do you think you manage or how well do you think you manage your personal life and your business life? And like, do you have like a boundary of like times where it's just dedicated to just family and personal life and just for business? 
Yeah, I actually struggle. That's probably one of my like, this is probably like one of the most important things to be honest with you, because when you first start a business, everybody's pretty understanding that you're like working your tail off to like build this business. And then there's going to be a point where you've built this business and now it's like you can't run it yourself anymore. So you have to now find people who can help you manage your time, pay them well, make sure they're they're representing your brand correctly. Um, so, but what I'll tell you, like all these people you see in business that are like mega successful, like doing like crazy numbers, like that mark up there, they're putting in crazy amount of time. You may not see it. You may see the social media highlight reel of like, oh, they're on a boat or whatever, but that it's impossible. You you have to be to make the United States of America business is so competitive, man. It's just so competitive. And to really build something great, you have to be up like like I'm up all the time. I just had a baby. So I'm like learning that money isn't everything like a young like when we're young and we're like a, a guy, we're like, oh, you know, like money's everything like blah, blah, blah. But then when you start to put in perspective, like family, like you said, lifestyle, um, having kids, it's like, that's really important and more important. So you have to manage your time. Um, this is something I've struggled with recently. Like I said, I just had a, a little girl, so I'm trying to be there for her more. So really what you do is you work harder, but in like segments. So like you like bust, bust your butt in the morning, you know, go spend time with them in the middle of the day, have like a team, like a marketing team, all your, your staff, like working on something, um, and then go spend time with the family. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's time management at it's at the fullest, you know? Yeah. So would you say like having an important team is definitely, uh, one of the more important things of a business? Yes, you're so you're the most important as an owner. Your team is very important, but sometimes like you can hire and somebody's not really like doing the right thing. So you kind of got to just get rid of them and find somebody who kind of can do the job correctly. That's it's a difficult part, like partners, like hiring, firing. Um, it is. It's very difficult, but it is important. Um, you do want to you don't want to have like a huge staff because then you got all these like things going on and stuff and you kind of lose your brain. You see it a lot now with like big companies. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody who's like, like lost their brand identity, but it is important, like hire a staff, but keep it like high and tight. Don't, don't have like a bunch of people just not doing anything, you know? Yeah. Okay. So what do you think is the most important thing that you look for when hiring? The most important thing I look for when hiring is a sense of like drive and compassion. Um, I've ran into some people where you hire them and then they like kind of just coast. Like they just want like a paycheck. They're not really like giving it all they got, but then I'll make like a really good hire and they're just so passionate. They're like, they just love what they do and you can sense that and your customers can sense that. And those people, what people don't realize, you pay more. You 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 constantly are increasing their pay. You think about like new things to like motivate them. Because again, too, with hiring, a good point is not everybody's motivated by money. Um, some people just love what they do, to be honest with you. So if you can find a good employee who is in a sector of development that they just love, I mean, that's really what you're looking for. But the main red flags for for hiring is like try not to find people who are um, just kind of like slacking and coasting and not not like have that spirit that you can kind of sense. You know, I can I can real I can sense that usually, and uh, and um, like social proof. So like look at their what they've done, what they've been working on recently. That tells a lot about them. Got it. All right. Thank you so much. And how did you manage to build up all your connections? Um, connections are, are more so through recommendations. So like building something and then people will start slowly kind of like come in, um, and like hit you up for different, different things. And then just, just building relationships. Some go really bad sometimes, to be honest with you, some people just fall out of your life. And then some you've known like MPAP. I mean, think about that. I've, I met you through MPAP, the Swift iOS. I've known him since 2017. And if, 
if you were to go through like me and his DMs and communication, man, like we've just supported each other. There hasn't been much else other than that is like we both just kind of mess with each other. And those are my favorite. That's why I was telling you, like, you almost want to keep your circle like really small in, in at least me. That, that's just how I you like you don't want a ton because then you just get a lot of issues and people like using you and, and all sorts of stuff. So really just vetting out people who genuinely just want to work with you, you know, um, and it can benefit you that way. So. Got it. So like, I feel like um, having a very genuine people around you is like very important and that they're actually like happy every day and like are excited to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think that's like the most like stress, stress free, um, but business also is kind of like a war zone. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, you know, when you, all these guys who run big businesses, they're constantly getting texts, emails, complaints, um, all sorts of stuff. So it's a war zone. So you want to just have kind of have your warriors set in place to to defend and and keep the business rolling. So it's not always, you know, like good vibes and everything. But those people who are like, I'm talking like your your three your three people who you can and just trust with everything. Those are really important people in a business, you know? Yeah. Got it. And I just have two more questions. Um, mm-hmm. How do you manage growth with your company? So growth, managing growth, growth is weird because like, it's more about consistency. Um, I would say just trying to grow is really fundamentally based on like marketing and, um, really growth is just like marketing and then like building sales. And then, like I said earlier, like going from meta to meta, um, growth is crazy though. Cause some, some years it'll like go do, do, do. And then you'll have like these like economic collapses. And it's more about like, if you're trying to get into business and stay in business, don't necessarily worry about growth all the time, because that can make you actually, super focused on the wrong things like focus on making your customers happy making them successful um making sure you're taking care of the their core needs what they want if you're selling a product or if you're selling a service stay true to what works that's the more important thing with growth is like focus on what works what's bringing you sales um things like that and then growth will just growth is just kind of like a byproduct you know um like i could I could, you know, pay for marketing or expenses to have this massive growth on Instagram, but it's like when those customers come in and there's nothing there, then, you know, it's, it's like you have growth, but you don't really have like a business, you know? Okay. And what's the hardest thing about founding your own company? The hardest thing about founding your own company. Um, that's a good question. The hardest thing about founding your own company. Really, it's just, uh, I don't know. The The crazy thing is like founding a company in the beginning is actually like really fun. Like you like building it. The hardest part though, is getting that first, like most people, like my friends, like I've tried helping with businesses and like even me with my startup, Flip Flip started because I loved doing it. And it probably went like this most of the, like a few years. And most people just drop out right at that point they because they don't love it. They're just trying to make a dollar. And that's probably the hardest part of being a founder is people start and they're not getting any success and they give up. And what happens is if you just keep going like this, eventually something's going to happen. And when you get your big thing that happens, that's when you start to like kind of take off it. it there's a lengthy period. It's not like a, uh, you don't just found a company and it just starts off right away. And I think a lot of people find that really difficult. That's the biggest thing, man, that I see is people give up so quickly because something doesn't work like instantly. And it's only getting worse with like social media. Um, so my thing is find what you love doing, be passionate about the work, live it, show people it. People love seeing people who love doing what they love to do. And really just stick with it a while. Stick with it. Maybe it takes a few years, but eventually if you stick with it long enough, something's going to happen. Like you're going to have a little bit of success. Um, and that's what happened to me. It eventually, like I said, like a lot of people didn't believe in me in the beginning. Um, I was 
thrifting at my job at, at Citibank. I was bringing stuff up to the top floor, taking pictures and it, people just thought it was like a cute thing and I enjoyed it. Um, but really what I was doing is I was building something special. It just takes a while. It just takes a while. Got it. Thank you so much. And yeah. do you know if I asked where you went to college? Uh, yes, I went to uh, community college. I think it was called like Brevard Community College. Wow. Um, and what's funny about that is like, I've never been like a school person, man. Like I had horrible grades um, and it wasn't a lack of like, it was a more of a lack of effort. Like I wasn't trying, I was very distracted. I had a lot of stuff going on. Um, but, but yeah, I, I used to be in like my, my community college classes and I was an entrepreneur and I'd get texts about like deals to build websites or marketing and stuff like that. And in the middle of the class, I'm like, I would just leave because I'd have to do work. And then I was just like, I don't, I don't need college to start a business. You know, it's not, um, now what I will say about college though, is I wish I would have went because I'm a huge Florida Gators fan. And I actually think the college experience is amazing. I think that like you going to USC is like so badass. I think, you know, and you like becoming an alumni and like meeting and networking with like really smart people. I think it's amazing. Um, I wasn't like able to do that, but if I could go back and I hope my daughter regardless goes through that experience because it's only what, two to four years, but now you you're going to have relationships. You're going to have networking. Um, so you can do both. You can work on a business and go to like a badass school. So, and then you become an alumni, you have all these friends from college, these experiences. Um, so yeah, man, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, I would say I'm kind of similar to you. Like I don't have the best grades, but I, uh, I like love, I guess, making my own businesses. Like I used to, uh, resell shoes back in the day and then it all, uh, all went to like NFTs and stuff. And then Amazon FBA, like I've been on that since like fifth, sixth grade. It, like <laughs> it's been a long time I've been doing this. How old are you? Uh, I'm 16. I'm about to turn 17. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, bro. Yeah. You're holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, the main thing right now for you is just just have fun, man. You're so young. Um, I wouldn't like, uh, I used to be like a few years back. I'd tell you like, work your, your work, your tail off, like build, build, build. But you're, you're 16 years old, like experience things, keep doing things like this, like interviewing people, like, um, you know, being very social networking, you know, meeting people. I think that's what you should do. And you're already doing it right now. So great job. Um, go to USC. Um, if you can, you're going there, right? Oh, hopefully, ho hopefully, hopefully I get in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go to college, have a good time. Um, you know, 16 years old, I can't even imagine thinking about business at 16 years old. I, I can't, <laughs> it's, cra it's crazy that you kids are doing this at this young now. It's actually insane. Yeah. Um, uh, so do don't, do you know who Morn is by chance? I think he's a little controversial, maybe. Who is it? Uh, I think his username is XXX Morn. M -O -X -X -R -N. I don't know. I don't think so. He, he, Why? He used to be pretty um like popular on sneaker Twitter for like uh cracking bots. Oh, okay. No, I don't I don't think I know that. Yeah, he was really popular and I actually started a bot flipping group with him. It was called Swipe Signals and we charged like 250 a month and there was like a hundred something people that joined. That was like uh, one of my favorite experiences reselling. Yeah, I mean, what year was that? Um, I think that was like, I want to say 20, ooh, 2020 or something like this is when Stella that sounds about right. Selling, yeah. Yeah, dude, I made a ton of money on because I had Cyber, I had Wraith. Um, you can't sell Swift iOS and I never would. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm trying to think, bro, like bots at that time <laughs> were yeah. crazy, bro. Like I'll never forget selling Wraith for like I think it was like almost like, like 15 grand or it may have been more. And like it's just crazy. Like I was telling you, the the metas that just that's why like if you do want to start something again, try to just keep doing that. Like find these like little metas, make some quick cash, um, invest it. Like right now, 
that's kind of what I'm doing. Like this in-store clearance thing is really popular. And we have like people on the inside who are like giving us so like info and stuff like that. And we're building bots for it. Um, but now too, like I'm into some other things. Like I have like a sneaker store. Um, I have like other businesses like real estate, um, and other staff. So just keep building, man. You're, you're, but, but again, you're 16 years old, bro. Like, I'm not going to tell you it's like, you're a key, just have fun, man. Have fun. Don't, don't be too business focused. Like have some fun too. Got it. And, um, what is your one-year-old daughter or you just said you just had a daughter or one year ago? Yeah. She's like a, she's like a month old. Oh, dang. Is that your first child? Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you, has it been fun, exciting, or has it been like, uh, changing diapers and stuff? It's been fun. It's been like surreal, like having a kid for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't say changing diapers is fun, but it's like, uh, it's definitely like one of the, you feel so fulfilled once you have a kid, man. It's like, and the other thing I'll tell you too, is like, be appreciative of like your mom and dad, if you still have them, because like, I'll tell you, bro, as a new parent going through it right now, th those people really took care of you and you should like call them all the time because literally, bro, like you were helpless. Like you were like, couldn't do shit by yourself, bro. Like you were breastfed. You were like, they, they didn't sleep. They didn't, you know, they went through heck and back for you. And a lot of people don't realize that. Cause like when you're a kid, when you're that young, you don't remember anything. And like, until you have a kid in experience, you start to think like, Oh, my parents did this for me. And they really, they really didn't have to technically, like they could have just been like, I don't want this thing. I don't want that, you know? Um, so just be that, you know, call them because it is like, and you'll see, you know, you're young, but just appreciate your parents for like, uh, for what they are. Cause they, they really did do a lot for you. Um, just raising you. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Just, just giving you the opportunity to be on this computer is, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely being appreciative of my parents. I I can do, I can do better. <laughs> yeah. I used to be really bad about it. I wouldn't call my mom or my dad a lot. And like, I, I do regret that. So that's why I want to tell you, like, as a young man, like it is important. Just remember that, um, stay like really close with family. They're really important, really important, not only just for you, but for them, like their mental health, um, when you start a family, like it's going to make your, your family really strong. Um, you know, but you're Asian, right? Yeah. I'm Chinese. Yeah. 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 So you guys are pretty, you know, like, uh, like family close and stuff. So, um, like I said, man, it's just so important. Don't, don't get too lost in the sauce of like business, 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 like call your mom. Like she's, she loves you. Call your dad or, or whatever. So. Got it. All right. Thank you so much for this interview. I would love to talk to you again sometime soon. Yeah, man. And I'll, I'll invite you to the group and stuff too. I'm, uh, I'll post this on YouTube and, you know, uh, all that stuff, but thank you. I, I enjoyed doing it. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I'm about to write up like a three page.